affirmative. Um, syntaxes are uh, used are justified uh, by uh, government saying that they uh, deter uh, people from uh, participating in uh, immoral or undesirable behaviors, um, and they're also used. Uh, they're also justified by uh, the idea of increasing tax revenue. Uh, the three problems that we have that we established that uh, syntaxes syntax policies have. Uh, the first one being the present system is inherently burdening, burdening the taxpayer. The fact that sin taxes are flat taxes, which means they do not account for the consumer's income, uh, meaning that uh, people on the lower economic scale are going to be affected more greatly uh, and the tax is unfair to them. Um, so for example, the federal um, uh, tax on cigarettes uh, is a dollar and one cent a box, and that's regardless of size or um, uh, strength of the cigarettes. So. Um, also, in many cases, the revenues collected from the sin taxes are not used to address the consequences of un unhealthy behaviors, uh, so the sin taxes can't be said to um, sort of be trying to fix uh, the issues of uh, what are called uh, uh, immoral behaviors. Uh, going on to the second uh, stock issue, the burden felt by the taxpayer causes significant harm to the taxpayer and the economy. Um, Sin taxes uh, create black markets. Uh, an example of this is uh, there's a direct correlation between, okay. it's a study, Moving on to the third stock issue, the current syntax system does not have an effect on unhealthy behaviors. Uh, the negatives, uh, the opponents of our issue uh, brought up a lot of points about this, so I'm going to go over it pretty thoroughly. Uh, syntaxes have no effect on unhealthy behavior. Uh, according to uh, a study done by the University of Washington uh, the, on uh, the effect of state level soda tax on adult obesity, consumers may respond to the soda taxes by simply purchasing soda that is more sugar context, uh, content or calories per ounce, uh, or they may shift their consumption to items that are similarly unhealthy. So basically, while consumer behavior often changes as a result of sin taxes, uh, this doesn't necessarily mean that the new behaviors are healthier. Another example of this is um, an article in the Rand Journal of Economics. Uh, we demonstrate that it uh, has to do with cigarettes. Uh, we demonstrate that the tax-induced shift to higher yield cigarettes mitigates many of the health benefits of tax-induced smoking uh, cessation. Um, and then going on to, so basically to summarize, um, that third stock issue, um, syntaxes do not deter unhealthy behaviors. Um, they just sort of alter them, uh, but they still remain just as unhealthy. Uh, the fact that, moving on to the fourth stock issue, the fact that syntaxes do not have uh, an effect on unhealthy behaviors, behaviors means that they are not serving one of their main purposes, one of those main purposes being um, to sort of deter people from uh, consuming these products that are considered immoral. So uh, it can't be called a syntax, it has to just be called a regular tax. Uh, the fifth stock issue, syntax policies allow governments to pass moral judgments on vices. Uh, this is significant because uh, by implementing taxes based on moral judgments of these vices, uh, the government is interfering with the consumer's freedom of choice. Uh, our seventh stock issue and our first solvency claim Abolishing sin taxes on st uh, federal, state, and local levels uh, would completely eliminate the burden on the taxpayer paying sin taxes. Uh, eighth uh, stock issue, abolishing sin taxes on federal, state, and local levels would uh, mean that there would be uh, more straightforward legislation required to uh, increase government revenue. Basically, taxpayers would no longer be tricked into going along with uh, sin tax legislation that they know nothing about and that may not necessarily benefit them. Uh, the last issue, uh, stock issue, abolishing sin taxes on the federal, state, and local levels would result uh, in less interference uh, with the consumer's freedom of choice. So uh, basically the value hierarchy would change from uh, valuing safety uh, to valuing freedom over safety. So yeah, that's it. Thank you all for being ready tonight. I know that extra time would be pleasant, but uh, just
just think you'll enjoy the next five days so much more than everybody else will. <coughs> Those of you who did peer evaluations tonight, once again, let me remind you, <coughs> put your name <coughs> on the evaluation form. There's a box up there for the peer evaluations. <coughs> Leave them there on your way out. Can I? 